Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Lisa. Today we're going to be making a really simple acorn squash. It's nice for fall. It's going to have little cranberries that were soaked, um, a little brown sugar, a little syrup, roasted in the oven. Delicious. Then I'll be doing some more upcoming uh, fall recipes, including one with butter squash, butternut squash. I just have a certain somebody in mind. Her name is Harriet. She's a vegetarian and I'm thinking of you tonight uh, when I make this. Actually, I'm making it for you. Um, and hopefully you like this. I'm going to be doing one with the butternut squash too, roasted in the oven. Um, I'm going to take three acorn squashes. I'm going to cut them down the middle, like this way, not this way. Take the pit out and then I'm going to uh, cut them into like four to five slices. I'm going to be mixing, actually these come low sugar, but since I'm mixing with the vinegar, I thought, eh, let me get, um, the regular ones. I actually, I should be using low sugar because I do have them here but anyway I'm going to be mixing a little bit of these with a little bit of the vinegar sticking them in the microwave um the recipe calls for cane syrup but guess what I'm going to mix a little bit of the molasses with white corn syrup right here it's, it's the same thing it's just as good or you could just use straight up maple syrup it's up to you um I'm just going to do the two combinations because cane syrup is very similar to molasses I'm going to use a pinch, like an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You can leave it out. I'm going to be using um, pan vegetable spray on the vegetables. About a tablespoon of brown sugar. I'm going to, which you normally don't um, for this recipe here, I'm going to add a little bit of nutmeg and a little bit of my cinnamon. Just a little bit. You can leave that part off, but you have to put a little brown sugar on. And then a little sprinkling of um, chopped parsley. And that's it's really simple. And this will be roasted in the oven. Um, I'll show you how we're going to slice this next. I didn't mention, you're going to be using a little salt. Funny, I have kosher salt. A little black pepper. So let me put that over here. And still about three, uh, about a tablespoon and a half of extra virgin olive oil. We're going to mix it all together in a bowl. And then put it on our cookie sheet. When you slice it in half, this is what it's going to look like. Kind of like a pumpkin. Okay, and it has a really mild pumpkin-ish. Uh, if you don't like sweet potatoes, you'll still like this. The only thing I can say is like a mild, mild, mild sweet potato. But if you don't like sweet potatoes, you will still like this. I'm not a big sweet potato girl. But anyway, when you scoop out the seeds, you know, you're going to put your spoon in there and scrape it all out. It's going to look like this. Okay. So we're going to just go like this and scrape all that out. Guys, just so you know, I cut the stems off. I have one left to do, like this, right here. Okay, so you're gonna cut this into four or five slices, okay? Like this. These are hard to cut. Actually, I'm gonna have Ken do it. Guys, I'm gonna take one fourth cup um, sherry, okay? One fourth cup sherry. I see with my own eyes because I'm a fighting wearing glasses. Okay. Alrighty. So one fourth cup sherry, two one fourth cup cranberries. Yum. Now I'm gonna probably throw in just a couple more with that. Hey. Um, I'm gonna microwave this on high for about 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna let this concoction okay sit for 10 minutes and then i'm going to drain it and then i'll be back there is the cranberries and the uh the sherry vinegar i'm just gonna like i said let it sit here 10 minutes drain it and this is gonna get sprinkled once the squash uh, i'm so sorry once the uh squash is cooked i'm gonna sprinkle the top of it with the cranberries and some parsley i melted one tablespoon of butter now if you had cane syrup you would use one fourth cup of cane syrup mixed in here but since i don't and there's four tablespoons in a, a in one fourth cup i'm going to break it down and again you could use all maple syrup you could use all molasses i'm going to use a combination of two and a half tablespoons of molasses to a tablespoon and a half of corn syrup um that gives me four tablespoons all together and then we're going to add if you want you don't have to, but like I said, one eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. 
by all means you don't have to and here we go and you could grease this first so it comes out easier but I am not okay one tablespoon and again you, you could do substitutions yourself Google that and you could do whatever combination you like but but molasses is the closest okay two And then we're gonna do a half. I wonder if I just maybe I'm just you know what? I'm just gonna do three tablespoons of molasses and one tablespoon of uh light corn syrup. It's just easier. Okay, here's my third. Here is my um caro syrup, my light corn syrup. We're gonna do a tablespoon of that. So hang on, let me pour it right in, and there you go. Then I'm going to whisk it together. I'm going to stir with this, but I'm going to go get my eighth of a teaspoon um, of cayenne. I don't even think I'm going to put an eighth of a teaspoon in, guys. Maybe less than that, like half of an eighth, like one sixteenth, like that. Okay. Okay. So when I put in uh, my granddaughter's chocolate Mexican pudding, which is delicious. But this is all you're going to do. And I'm going to brush both sides of the acorn squash before I bake it in the oven with this mixture. I don't want to be a pain in your butt and sound like a broken record. Again, if you don't like molasses, you don't have to use molasses. You could use maple syrup. You could use honey. The combination is up to you. Just trying to clean up a little bit and get things ready. Um, because we're having a, a big meal, but I'll taste one of these for you. This is the cranberry that was in the sherry vinegar. Very good. Mm -mm. Perfect, perfect balance of sweet and sour. You took away a lot of that sweetness from that cranberry, from that vinegar, which is good, but you don't taste sour like you're eating a salad. It's a perfect balance. It's very good. Mm. Guys, I tested for you. If, if you don't have sherry wine at home, guess what I did for you? I used one, t a two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, the good kind, the one with the mother uh, in it. Um, Ken, which one is that? Bragg's? Bragg's. Just apple cider vinegar, right? Yes. With two tablespoons of water. And I did the same thing, you know, with the uh, one-fourth cup cranberries in the microwave. And it's just sitting here. It tastes just as good. And if you wanted to, you could taste this after five minutes of marinating and see if it's sour enough for you or getting too sour. Whatever the case may be. And you could go from there. All right, guys. Um, got a little lazy cutting some of this because it was... Hard, but I didn't have my good knife but anyway um can definitely help me out so you know when I said later we're gonna brush on this hold on this mixture right there that we made that's the maple syrup um, excuse me that's supposed to be the cane syrup but it's the molasses mixture okay I'm just gonna throw it all in here and just with my hands mix it all together because I want to get every little nook and cranny so let me start by putting the oil on guys listen if you want you could half this recipe one and a half squash, uh, egg, eggs, corn squashes, everything we did, just half it if this doesn't be too much for you. Guys, we're going to put um, four and a half teaspoons of um, oil in here. Okay, I'm using extra virgin olive oil. And there's three teaspoons and a tablespoon. So I'm going to use one tablespoon plus a teaspoon and a half. Okay, so here's a tablespoon which is three teaspoons right away. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Hang on. So here's the other teaspoon of oil. And then I'm going to do the half right in here. Fill it up halfway. A little more is okay. Then I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And I'm going to do a sprinkling of pepper. Okay, here's our salt. Okay. 
Okay. A little pepper. I'm going to do a big tablespoon, heaping tablespoon of brown sugar. Here's our pepper, just a little bit, just a little bit. I've been saying I need glasses, right? I have not been wearing glasses because um, I'm fighting it. I thought that I said a half a teaspoon. It was actually a half a tablespoon, which is fine. So I have a lot of squash in here and you can use it. So I'm going to be doing a nice heaping packed tablespoon of brown sugar. See how heaping that is? Okay, just like this. Okay. A little nutmeg and a little cinnamon. And you don't have to do nutmeg or cinnamon at all. Guys, I'm just using a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon because this is not normally even get cinnamon and nutmeg, just the brown sugar. So by all means, you don't have to do cinnamon or a nutmeg, but you definitely have to do the brown sugar. I may just add a pinch more brown sugar, but I'm going to mix this first by my hand, with my hands, and then I'm going to add um, that syrup we made instead of just um, brushing it on. So I'm just going to mix this all together, and I'll be back. Guys, I'm just mixing this like crazy. I keep scooping everything up from the bottom with the brown sugar and just making sure it's really evenly coated. Once I get my syrup on, we're going to put this on a cookie sheet, bake it at 475. I have a really hot oven right now. I've been preheating it for like a half hour, 475 for at least 40 minutes, maybe longer. Depends on your, um, your oven. But anyway, this should be brushed on, I said, but I'm just going to do it this way. So I'm going to go do this, mix it by hand, and I'll be back. Guys, I'm just going to squish this around. And I do, even though I put that little bit of um, hot pepper in there, I do taste it a little bit. Nothing crazy, but I feel it on the back of my tongue. So I just ate some of this syrup, and it was delicious. This is a big piece. This one should have been, oh, it is. Oh. Well, this one should have been cut one more time. Um, but it's very sticky, so I don't want to use my fingers again because I just washed them. But I'm just going to continue breaking, um, not breaking, pushing this around getting this flat and then I'm going to put this in the oven at um, like I said 475 for at least 40 minutes you want it fork tender and you want it golden and then when it comes up I'm going to sprinkle those cranberries and some uh, like one fourth cup parsley on there Guys, I just want to say the proper way to do this is after you bake this for 40 minutes then you're supposed to turn a uh, brush your um, squash with the um, syrup we just that mixture we just made I do not so all together this should cook for about 52 minutes that makes more sense about 50 uh, 52 minutes um, but I always put my mixture on first guys I don't know if there's any background mess but I apologize I just got done making homemade biscuits um, but this is what it looks like okay you can eat the skin mine cooked 50 minutes you could cook them um, 50 minutes, 52 minutes, 55 minutes, just whenever they're done. They have to be fork tender. And again, this tastes is really, 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 really like a mild pumpkin. And if you don't like sweet potatoes, you'll like this and whatnot. But all I'm going to do is sprinkle. I'm just going to do half right here with some um, cranberries. Okay, we're going to put a little parsley on and that's how we're going to do it on this side the other one is the other cranberries i made with um the apple cider vinegar and the water and they came out delicious too and i did marinate them for the whole 10 minutes that's this side just like that and then i'm going to put the rest on or off camera but i just want to show you this is what it's going to look like over here too just like that. Voila. Guys, I just wanted to show you show you one more time. You know, what it looks like. Doesn't this piece right here look so delicious? With all that nice syrup. Oh, guys, this is, I put this syrup on in the beginning. I told you, technically, you could wait 40 minutes, then put it on for the last 
12 minutes of cooking. I never do. But it's not yummy, look. Mm. Well, let me take a little bite. Hang on. All right, guys. So we're going to just dip in and Harriet, this piece is for you. You know what? I want something with more. Let's take this one. I like all those cranberries. So hang on. Less parsley. Hang on. Mm. Very good. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Delicious. Harriet, I do think you'll like this. And to all you, especially vegetarians, this is really good. But there's a lot of people who are not a vegetarian who would find this delicious too because it's like corn squash. You don't have to be, what I'm saying is you don't have to be a vegetarian to eat this and like this. Guys, I promise I'll go away after this. You know, you don't have to put brown sugar at all. You could do like thyme and um, sage. You could do just rosemary. You could do thyme and rosemary and make this all savory. Again, but not saying this is sweet. Guys, I have the homemade biscuits in the oven finished cooking. But here's our pork chop. This is the um, cauliflower with the mashed potatoes. Um, a little thyme and garlic. And here is a corn. Guys, here is the dinner. I have a salad on the side. These are homemade biscuits. They are delicious. And again, I put that stuffing we made earlier. Well, that was in that frying pan. All on top of the pork chop. Mm. I'm eating one of these. I didn't have to add any more butter. These truly are flavorful. Very good. And I was just saying on my other video, if you put cheddar cheese in these, and then when they come out, melt a little butter with a little garlic salt, or you can use just garlic powder with a little salt, and turn them upside down and go like that in there, you'll have red lobster biscuits. Mm. Delicious. Please give these a try. I'll, I'll link the video for those.